Okay, let's talk about the GACE exam. And GACE stands for Georgia Assessments for the Certification of Educators. And the specific GACE exam we're going to be taking a look at in this video is the Middle Grades Mathematics Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to be a middle grades math teacher in the state of Georgia, and obviously you got to get through this certification exam in order to be uh, qualified to do so. What we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at a uh, practice prom that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared uh, for the GACE middle grades math assessment. But we'll get to that in a second. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last several years, I've constructed many online math classes to include a GACE middle grades math assessment test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video, but all my courses have taken me uh, years to construct, and the way I uh, make specific courses, I really do a lot of research on what's on these particular exams. And I would say for the GACE middle grades uh, math assessment, uh, very much like all uh, states, that if you're going to be teaching at the middle grades level, you're going to need to know uh, more than just middle grades math. You probably already know that, but I would say I would classify the type of math you would need to know for this particular um, assessment as advanced high school level math. So more than just basic um, algebra and geometry and uh, obviously fractions and things like that. You're going to have to know some more, more advanced um, level mathematics. So let's go ahead and get to our problem here. So I'd like you to uh, find, well, let me just say this much. This is the way I like to do these problems. I'm going to give those of you out there an opportunity to figure this out. Okay, then I'm going to give you a hint if you need a hint. <laughs> so if you don't want to hear the hint, pause the video, then I'm obviously going to uh, solve the problem. All right, so the first thing is put your calculators away. Okay, I don't want any, any calculators, no calculators allowed. All right, so what I'd like you to do without the aid of a calculator is to uh, solve this trigonometric equation. I want you to solve for theta in degrees. Okay, so I want you to solve this and we're going to be doing this in degrees, not radians. So if already you're a little bit, you know, lost, then, hey, don't panic. You stick around for the hint. And then obviously, you know, uh, I'm going to solve this problem. But the whole idea behind a video like this or the videos I make like this is just to give you feedback on what may be your current math skill in particular uh, subjects. OK, like, again, uh, you're going to have to cover a, a broad spectrum of mathematics to be uh, fully prepared for the GACE middle grades math assessment. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the problem. Okay, so I'm going to give you a hint now. If you don't want to hear the hint, go ahead and uh, pause the video. All right, so we're trying to find the sine of an angle, okay, that is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Now, if I said you could use a calculator, okay, what would you do? Um, and of course, you know, I'm saying do not use a calculator, but let's say here's our handy dandy calculator. You would go ahead and uh, hopefully you would know what to do here. You would take this right here and turn it into a decimal, okay? So you make this into a decimal point da, 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 or whatever it's, it's going to be, right? So you get your decimal uh, figure and then you're going to go ahead into your calculator and do the arc sign or whatever that decimal is, okay, the inverse sine function or arc sine as it's uh, known, and that would give you one angle, okay, because there's multiple angles that we could do. Now, to actually be more specific, I should say, I could give you a range. I'd say I want your answer in degrees, but I might say uh, keep theta uh, less than or equal to 360 degrees, but more than zero degrees. Basically, we're going to be looking at the whole unit circle. All right, so if you're still lost, all right, don't panic, okay? But we are talking about, you know, pretty uh, basic trigonometry skills that you're going to need to know, okay? All right, so the first thing is, this is how you would approach this with a calculator. But every time you're dealing with a trigonometric equation and they say, do not use a calculator, 
99% of the time, what you're going to be uh, needing to know is your special right triangles, okay, or a right triangle of some sort, okay, but typically something like this, you're going to really have to um, be aware of the two right triangles, special right triangles, one is the 45, 45 degree right triangle, and the other is the 30, 60, 90, okay, so this would be 60, this would be 30, okay, now, uh, of course, I'm just still giving you a hint here. The uh, hint for this particular problem is you're going to this you're going to be using this triangle. So the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. You need to know the legs, okay, the lengths, okay, the ratio between uh, the lengths of the legs, okay. Obviously, you're going to need to know the same thing for the 45, 45, because these come up all the time, okay, in trigonometric equation type of problems, especially. When you uh, are told, do not use a calculator, it's like an alarm bell going off that you're going to need to know uh, these particular uh, triangles. Of course, you're going to need to know more than that because we, we need to know, <coughs> excuse me, what the sine of an angle represents, etc. Okay, so let's kind of get to it now. And now I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so right now I said, okay, you got square root of 3 and 2, and you're like, hmm, well, those look like values that are associated with the 30, 60, 90 right, uh, special right triangle. So let's just go ahead and in a little bit neater way, do my best to be neat. So here is a little right triangle and we'll call this our 60 degrees and this is our 30 degrees. So the ratios, okay, of a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle, the lengths of the side would be this. The shorter side we could say one, okay, the hypotenuse is always double the amount of the shortest uh, leg. Okay, so that would be two. And then this leg, this middle leg, is going to be the shortest amount times the square root of three. So in this case, it's just going to be the square root of three. So these values here, okay, we can use for 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. And you can kind of see what's going on is that we have a square root of three and we have a two, so we have a square root of three and two in our uh, 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. Now we have to think back on the sine, okay? So what is the sine of an angle, any angle, all right? Well, you remember that term SOCA-TOA? SOCA-TOA, I'm kind of getting into basic trig here, right? So the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so the, let's say the sine of this angle right here, okay, would be its opposite value, okay, over the hypotenuse. So when I look at what the definition of sine is, I'm looking at the opposite over the hypotenuse, and you can see here that it's matching this special right triangle, okay? Square root of 3 over 2, square root of 3 over 2. So... What is the sign of this angle? Well, it was 60 degrees. I just kind of erased it there for a second. So the answer is theta, okay, that's the angle, is 60 degrees. But it gets a little bit more interesting than that, okay? So this is going to kind of take it to the next level. So hopefully, you can say, okay, it's 60 degrees. But now, let's kind of put this on a unit circle, Okay. And this is where you kind of have to, um, you know, really be more, you know, uh, what's the word? I'm kind of stumbling here, ready for more advanced problems. Okay, so this right here is pretty basic. Hopefully, most of you out there understand this. But let's take a look at this on a unit circle, okay, an XY plane here. So let's see here uh, without making this. I'm kind of sketching this out. Try not to use the kind of graph paper on my computer here. But here, this represents, we have one here. We have the square root of three here and two there. So this is my representation of a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. So here is 60 degrees. And so we have one, okay, along the x-axis and square root of three along the y-axis. But this is not the only uh, way. Okay, we have two, by the way. Two is our hypotenuse. So 
If you recall in trigonometry, your hypotenuse, okay, any right triangle, when we're talking about reference triangles, or is this is always going to be positive. And these lakes here are going to be either positive or negative, all depending on what quadrant they're in. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how I can um, draw another 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. So I'm going to kind of go this way. All right, and I'm just kind of sketching this out. So what if I had 60 degrees here? So this would be my two right here. Okay, and then I would have three or the square root of three right there. It's still positive in this in the, uh, the second quadrant, right? This is still a positive value, but down here I would have negative one. Okay, negative one. But I don't need to use the x um, value values here, it has nothing to do with the sine of this angle, okay? So the sine of this angle is 60 degrees, okay? So here, this is a sine of 60 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. But this angle right here, all right, we have something called a reference angle. This is what, what angle is this? Well, it's 60 degrees this way, but really the angle is going to be 180 degrees, right? It's this whole line minus 60 degrees. So that's 120 degrees. So the sine of 120 degrees is the same thing as a sine of 60 degrees. And if you don't believe me, you can go into your calculator. So that's also the square root of three over two. So you'll have multiple angles, um, you know, depending on how the question is phrased, you got to look at the intervals um, of uh, where they're trying to, you know, where the solutions are at. Okay, so you, generally speaking, they're going to say, "Hey, find the answers between zero and 360 degrees." So, so this is a basic example of of a trigonometric equation, solving a trigonometric equation, and you can get a little bit, you know, involved. Easy to make a mistake. Okay, but, you know, um, if you didn't even understand the fundamentals of, of, you know, what was going on in the problem in terms of 30, 60, 90 special right triangles or understanding what sine is or understanding reference angles, well, you know, obviously you got to brush up on your trigonometry. Um, so remember, you know, at the middle grades math level, okay, um, you're really getting your students prepared uh, for high school level math, of which many may very well take AP calculus etc. So at the middle grades level, and I'm sure it's the case in Georgia, you know, you could be definitely teaching algebra one or maybe even uh, geometry. All right. So you're going to be teaching, you know, advanced topics. And even if you're teaching geometry uh, at the middle grade level, um, I know some schools uh, do that for like they're more like their honor students in high school level geometry, there is basic trigonometry. So these skills or what, you know, these concepts, you're, you're going to be teaching the fundamentals of, of which, you know, things like this are going to be, uh, topics like this are going to be built upon. So you really do have to know your stuff. But um, these certification exams, they're not, they're not easy. You know, they're professional exams. And, um, you know, you are going to be a professional math teacher at this level. So you definitely got to know your stuff. I'm probably telling you stuff that you already know in terms of what kind of math, you know, um, you got to be uh, ready for. So hopefully this little video, you know, gave you some feedback on some of your math skills. Now, if you did solve this problem, you know, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so congratulations without any hint. If you're able to solve it with a hint, that's good too. If you were completely lost, don't panic, okay? Because, you know, you can, you know, learn this stuff or relearn it. You've already learned it somewhere along uh, the line, okay? By virtue of you watching this video, you're taking this exam seriously of, you know, of what you need to because it's not going to be a cakewalk and you just don't know what kind of problems are going to come at you. So, you know, you're going to have to be ready for a lot of different topics, logarithms, matrices, quadratic equations, polynomials, all kinds of stuff in geometry, um, you know, uh, probability, etc. But, hey, if you love math, which I assume you do, if you, you know, if uh, you want to teach the subject, you got to get yourself immersed in it. And it's only going to pay dividends. It's a win-win. 
it's one, you're going to, uh, you know, increase your chances of passing, but two, it's just going to make you a better math teacher. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my Gase middle grade uh, math uh, test prep course in the description of this video. All my courses, again, have taken me several years to construct. I take a lot of pride in them, but I think you'll um, be impressed, at least I hope you would be, with the amount of content that I have in my course. Um, so if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 plus years, at least the time of this video. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that could help you out. So if you like my teaching style, you can check that out. And hopefully consider subscribing because I'm posting new stuff all the time. If you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. You know, what's your uh, kind of your career path here? Are you going from high school to college um, uh, right to the classroom? Or maybe you're retired from another career and you're making this switch. Or maybe you're coming from another grade level. It's always interesting to see how people's teaching careers form. You know, it's definitely not, um, especially this day and age, you know, every, there's all kinds of paths to become a teacher, which I think is really cool. But the one thing that I would like to always, you know, I do a lot of teacher prep, uh, teacher certification videos, but the one thing that I like to reiterate, which I've already, um, I'm sure you've already know, is that teaching, half of it is all your professional certification, your knowledge, like, you know, passing tests like this, all the, you know, just being, you know, uh, on top of your game and of all the math knowledge and all the things that you need to know uh, just to become a teacher. However, actually to be good at teaching, it takes time and experience. So, you know, um, you have reasonable expectations if you're going to be new to the classroom, all right? Dealing with students, dealing with parents, dealing with administration, dealing with um, all kinds of crazy scenarios that, you know, you never could, you know, never could imagine, you know, going on. That is, you know, that coupled with you teaching the, the concepts is, I mean, that's what it's really like to be a teacher. So latch on to those veteran teachers until you can come, uh, till you can kind of find your way. Learn from those people who have been doing it for a long time and give yourself time to develop uh, the experience to be a good teacher. As you teach more, more years, okay, uh, you'll get better at it and you'll enjoy it more. All right. So unfortunately, there's a pretty high rate of people um who start teaching, and I think they have false or unreasonable expectations, and they quit. I, I want to say that uh, I read some time ago that, I mean, up to maybe even 50% of the people who start teaching after the first three years, three or four years, a lot of those people are gone. They're, they, leave, they leave teaching, okay? I think sometimes they leave too soon because, you know, you're, you're going to have to give yourself time to develop that experience, all right? Okay, so with that being said, uh, hopefully, you know, um, all this information is helping you out. Um, I certainly wish you all the best on this particular assessment. You definitely can do it. Just going to have to be smart about your study. Uh, put the work in. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.